Policymakers are meeting this week to discuss interest rates, and we have been talking with Tony Crescenzi, market strategist from PIMCO, about the fine line that the Fed has to walk, Tony, between the idea of, of not, I should say, letting growth go, not hampering it, but not encouraging inflation either. And you say there's a new focus at the Fed, more on conditions versus timing. Yes, yeah, so over time there's been an evolution and we should emphasize that the underlying tone here in the policy statements and in all the Fed says and its actions is to keep the exit a process and not an event. In doing so, of course, they keep from rattling the financial markets and, of course, uh, inject an element of stability into the markets and hence uh, it's good for the economy. And so what we see here is the Fed trying to de-emphasize the time element because extended period has come to mean a period of at least six months. So by extended period for viewers who don't know, in the policy statement, the Fed has been saying each time uh, we expect to keep rates exceptionally low for an extended period. And in between meetings, Fed policy makers have told us that that extended period uh, means a period of at least six months. This is Bill Dudley at New York City. I mean, whether or not the Fed wants us to focus on conditions and not time, I mean, the market is really listening and parsing every single word that Bernanke says. I mean, what do you think happens next? I mean, what, did the, what does the Fed need to be able to change their language or to move? I mean, many focus on the, the jobs right. market. Uh, the Fed gave us three conditions in its policy statements to, as, as a guideline. Uh, number one, uh, resource Utilization. This means the unemployment rate, capacity utilization in the factory sector. There's underutilization of resources. Secondly, inflation. Inflation is low, so those, these are two factors that are not in play in terms of changing the extended period language or raising rates. The third factor, the one that will most likely be the one that causes the change, is inflation expectations. If markets begin to believe inflation might rise in the future as a result of a pickup in economic growth, that's a, that's the time when the Fed might change its language. But but most importantly, probably, is when the so-called output gap begins to close, when the unemployment rate begins to show a sign that it has, in fact, peaked a couple of strong employment reports, and there'll be two more before the June 23rd policy meeting, the one that follows this so Wednesday. By in June, there might be a change in the language, but again, keep it the idea in mind that it's probably going to continue to be an evolution here, slow changes that make this uh, exit a process and not an event. Tony, thanks so much for coming you, in. Always Great appreciate getting you. your thoughts. Tony Crescenzi, market strategist there from PIMCO.